Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our blind let's play. It's Attorney Investigations 2 for the DS. My name is Flutus Burr, this is your story is giving channel, and today. You know, I don't even know what to say anymore about these games. I mean, I I, I thought for sure Shelly Dick Killer was involved in this. And then I thought he wasn't. Then I thought he was. And then we find out maybe he wasn't and maybe it's this girl right here that's the actual criminal i don't know anymore but let's find out together shall we hope we all having a wonderful fantastic day today it ain't like i stayed in one spot while i was recording I was moving around the audience area, shuffling here and there. I reckon this picture must have been snapped at a different time to my tape recording. So quit making that scary face. It ain't what you think. Miss Swiss tape recorded a conversation between my colleagues, Mr. Payne and the chief prosecutor. But why would Nicole be lying? That would, uh, mean... Yeah, I would mean, um, that she's the criminal. Hey, me, Nicole Swift is the assassin, pal! Yeah, yeah, I, I literally just said that gum show. <laughs> it's good to know we're on the same page, though. Y'all gotta be kidding me. I ain't done nothing like that. Be that as it may, however, there is a contradiction in your testimony. Uh-huh. I don't reckon so. No, sir. It appears I must reveal this contradiction with evidence. It ain't like I stayed in one spot while I was recording. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, oops, my bad. Ah, stop, stop, stop. I, I, I can't skip it if I haven't seen it before. So look, I can skip this now. I can skip this now, but the first time through, you can't. So I try to back up and I just end up like skipping more and more and more. You were moving around while you were recording. Why were you doing that? Huh? What do you mean, why? Surely when recording a speech, it is best to remain still. Whether that's well, you know the importance of covering a story from Avi Inga? I want to convey the living, breathing event in print. Yes, sir, you betcha. If you were moving around, I doubt your tape would have picked up anything coherent. Well, it's it's like I didn't see it. I was moving around the audience area, shuffling here and there. Here and there, could you be more specific, such as the side you were on? When I say here and there, it means she's like that. It was all about the place. Could it swing a dead cat in that crowd? Expect to remember where it was? Could you at least remember if it was the left or right side? Well, left, I reckon. The person in the photo is also on the left side. Is this just a coincidence? I reckon this picture must have been snapped at a different time to my tape recording. So you're saying it is logical that you can't be seen in the photo. Yep, I was near that prosecutor when his voice got recorded. But I reckon this picture must have been taken when I was far away, no doubt about it. Ain't nothing wrong here, as far as I can see. So, you're saying the photo and the recording were taken at different times. Darn tootin'. It ain't about the equipment, it's all about the timing. What if they were both taken at the same time? If I could prove that, her entire testimony will collapse. So quit making that scary face. It ain't what you think. Scary face? The way I speak to others is not intended to come across as intimidating. Well then, why don't you try relaxing a bit more? 
You make that face when you put all the tension in your brow. No matter what you do, always do it with a smile. Don't you agree? I am searching for the criminal who attacked the president. This is no laughing matter. Ah, say the prosecutor with the grin on his face like the Cheshire cat. End quote. What? For me, it's nonsense. I'm not sure what a real scary face looks like. What the heck is the word Frumius? I have never heard this word before. What is Frumius? Frumius means extremely angry. Extremely angry, okay? Uh, learned something new today. What extremely angry nonsense? Does, does that even make sense? Nicole seems rather aloof about all of this. Still, she just doesn't seem like the kind of person to tell off her lies. I agree that she doesn't seem like a person with ill intent. But, if that's the case, there must be something even worse troubling her. In any case, Miss Swift's movements may have been recorded on that tape. Surely I have evidence that sheds some light on this. So what do we do? Um... Picture must be stopped at a different time to my tape recording. Hold it. What is that? I have no idea what that does. Anyway. Um. I didn't mean to do that. I pressed the wrong button. Nope, 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 nope. I didn't mean to do that either. Sorry, all. Okay, let's try this again. R. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's got to be the recording, right? Objection. It's the only one that makes sense. Miss Swift, a reporter shouldn't lie. I ain't lying. I'm an honest journalist. Perhaps, but there's no denying that the photo and the recording were taken at the same time. Well, that's so. What makes you say that? The truth lies in these photos. This photo could have only been taken at the same time as your recording. Which spot shows this was taken at the same time as recording? Is it the, uh, the gun right here? Here, study this area closely. Therein lies the answer to this mystery. Hmm, nope, I don't see it. Where is it? Here, here, look closely. Can't you see it? Either you're talking a load of hot gas, or this is one of them paranormal photos. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, are you telling me you're into you, 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 you foes? <laughs> I can't say that. I know she's trying to say you have a but I can't do that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Alright, uh, let's see. Um... The president raises his fist in the air. Okay, that's what it is. It's the fist. Okay, so it's the fist. I can... Can you see the president with his fist raised in the air? What about it? Miss Swift, might we hear the tape one more time? Nuh-uh. You ain't gonna hear a word the way you've been treating me. Would you rather we charge you with obstruction of justice and seize it from you? Uh... Fine. You win. I'm no match for you, Mr. Prosecutor. The question is, during which part of his speech the president raised his fist? No matter what sort of heinous criminal organization there is, I will not allow them to exist! Oh, well, 
Well, apparently I'm not glad those rights are exist either. I'm sorry about that. The president raises his fist in the air. The atmosphere is boiling to a fever pitch. Aha! Raise his fist straight from the horse's mouth, sir! This tape was recorded at the moment the president raised his fist overhead. So then that means... Nicole not being in this photo is really strange. Exactly, unless she is in the photo. Oh, but she is in the photo. Right here. The person in the red hood. It was you, Nicole Swift. Ah! You're the real assassin, aren't you, pal? Well, that ain't so. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I ain't never worn that red raincoat. Hmm. This red raincoat in question belongs to. I mean, is there a third raincoat? The person in the red hood is Miss Swift, and so the owner of the raincoat must be Miss Swift. It can only be you. Oh, but does that young lady have an injury, I wonder? Oh, right. Huh? Ah, what do you mean, pal? Oh, have you forgotten about the blood stain in the raincoat? Yes, I actually did. He's right. The right sleeve with the button torn off was stained with blood. Hmm, this red raincoat question belongs to Mr. John Doe. That much has been proven. You were wearing something else. A different red hood. Hey, you mean there were two red hoodies, sir? Mr. Doe's last testimony was true. What? We didn't find any other red raincoats. What Mr. Doe saw was a red hood, not a raincoat. Miss Swift, what was it you told us earlier about your parka? It's... Uh, it's, um, what's the word? Uh, reversible? Hmm? Oh, you mean when I said I ain't worried about getting all dirty? It's reversible. That's it. So, all I gotta do is turn it inside out and... Ah! As I thought. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, the inside of our park is... Oh, what was that? Indeed, and during the instant, she was using that side. What? Hey, pal! What's the big idea? You're wrong. I've been wearing it like this the whole day. Well then, will you allow me to examine your parka? Ah, oh, what are you expecting to find? We know it was raining prior to the present speech. I believe you said earlier. Well, I don't use raincoats or umbrellas. Come rain or snow, all I need is my trusty parka. If you really didn't turn your parka inside out, then the inside should be dry. Now hang on a minute. I ain't taking off this heavy backpack and putting it back on again. S sorry. Can't we do this like another time? Ah, you think you're full, Mr. Edgeworth, with that, pal? Uh, um, um. All right then, pal. We're really wrong. Prove it. Show us the inside of that parka. I... It wasn't me. I ain't no assassin. Miss Swift, if you want me to believe that, then you need to cooperate with us. Will you please tell us why you wore the red side of the parka? I'm sorry, Mr. Prosecutor. I had my reasons honest. I'll tell y'all everything. You just quit bullying me. Whose voice was that? What just happened? Huh? Hold on a sec. It's a little too early for the end game. It's the... It's the president? He's alive? 
No, that's not the president. Is that like Knightley or Rook? Yeah, the president's like a lion. Hey, you in the fancy suit. Haven't you been jumping the gun ever since your opening move? This man was in Kay's photo. Whoa, guess I should introduce myself first. My name is... Uh... Slick? We call you Slick? Okay. That's quite an introduction there. Who is Knightley? I'm the prisoner's bodyguard. Second command of his personal security unit. Ah! Watch it, pal! It's not a toy! Whoa, my bad. She just wants to come out and play. Can't seem to help me. Why do you have a gun if you're not a police officer? Well, she's the lady of Zing Fa. Only the president's bodyguards are authorized to use it. Anyway, back to business. I got some news for you. There's good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? It makes no difference to me. Do as you wish. Are you sure? Well, I'm going to give you the first move. All right, I got you. I'll start with my pawn. It seems you enjoy chess. You play too, Mr. Fancy Suit. It's Edgeworth, and I do have a fondness for chess. Was that so? Will then, Chess Mr. Edgeworth? Start with the good news. Present safe. Not even a scratch on him. Got shot in the head. Really? Well, that's great, pal. It seems that the young lady was not a murderer after all. Good for you, Nicole. But, but I... Who there? Don't forget, still the bad news. The president is safe because his bodyguards protected him. Actually, I had nothing to do with it. It was the leader who protected him. At the cost of his own life. That would be the other bodyguard. Rook, was it? Yeah, that's right. Rook died to protect the president. Hmm. What? Was that so? Rook is dead. It's such a shame. But that means... Nicole! It means that the little lady killed him. My brother in arms. But that ain't true. I ain't a murderer. Whoa there! Pipe down, little Miss Murderer! Ah. Jeez, even if we had to make a sacrifice to protect the king, it was a pretty bad move. And that casting. Sacrifice the castles? Ah, what's he talking about, sir? They're all chess terms. He's saying Rook's life was exchanged for the president's. This guy sure talks funny, sir! Horace Knightley, was it? Hmm, what do you want? I'd like to examine the victim's body as soon as possible. And if it's possible, I'd like to question the president. Sorry, but can't let you do that. Wh what? I got another piece of news for you, and this one's a doozy. There's another piece of news. From here on out, this investigation will be handled by the Zang Fa police. What? Ah, well, what's going on, pal? This case is under our jurisdiction. You have no right to interfere. You're a prosecutor's age worth, right? The president knows about you solving the Yatagatsu case. I am honored. Well, that's why the chief prosecutor designate you to be in charge of the case. It seems the chief prosecutor made a little appeal to the president. But, it looks like you're the wrong guy for the jail. I didn't know you'd have this kind of reaction. It's the president's orders. If you oppose, you'll cause an international incident. Capiche? <sighs> hey, little lady. Get over here. We'll continue your questioning inside the prison's plane. N no I, I I didn't do nothing. Hey now, don't be a baby. I'm scared of a little zing by justice. 
Mr. Prosecutor, please, please help me. Miss Swift. It's clear that Miss Swift was a person in the Red Hood. However, that doesn't mean that she, that the whole truth has been revealed. I really didn't do it. Please believe me. Is it really all right for to end this way? All I see is a girl with eyes full of fear pleading for help. Certainly not someone who's committed a heinous crime. If I stand aside now and do nothing, the truth will be lost to the darkness. That's how the game ended um, with the game over screens, the last game, right? Gah! Okay, whoever that is, I don't know what voice that was, but whatever. Eh? What? What? What the? You! Okay! Um... Uh, that escalated quickly. Silence. What the is an impolite way to greet someone? Your neck injury has yet to heal. And you've already forgotten. Uh, no, no, not you, not now. It seems you remembered. Didn't he like know this guy? So what if he wasn't trying to kill the president, he was trying to kill this guy instead? Hey, what are you doing? Head it out, pal. You got some nerve to do that right in front of detective and the prosecutor. Stop, stay out of this. He's out of your league. Mr. Dell, who on earth are you? I, I am not merely a simple ice cream salesman. Hey, he's a professional assassin. His name is Shelly Day Killer. Shelly Day Killer. There's no one in law enforcement who doesn't know the name Dick Killer. An assassin who will carry out any request without fail. He was what's involved in the case that I handled. It's been a while, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Although I do believe this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. The real assassin was you all along. That is correct. I received a request from a key individual to take the president's life. Oh wow, he did mean to kill the president. I should have seen his face before in the case files. Curses, I was careless. I'm glad I hid a knife inside my bandage before I entered the park. Even though my calculations were a little off. A knife, not a gun. Now, Mr. Knightley, shall we play that game that you love so much? Of course, the stakes will be your life. What are your demands? I want you to relinquish investigative authority back to Prosecutor Edgeworth. What? Why? Investigative authority. I, I, I'm just like shocked. What is going on here? Uh, who are you playing at? I simply want you to allow Ed Edward to continue his investigation. Huh? Why do you want that? Well, is an opponent who is connected to me by fate. I would like to discover the truth about his death. When that man died, the investigative authority was transferred to you. I am simply asking you to give it back to this prosecutor. With your life at stake, this really isn't the time to be stubborn. Why are you just using the investigation to get close to the president? And what if I am? Indeed, in order to continue the investigation, it is necessary that we enter the president's plane. As the leader of the prison bodyguards, I won't allow it. Oh, I thought you were only second in command. 
But now that Rook's gone, I'm in charge. I'm not sure if you're as capable as Rook was. What are you saying? I'm totally the leader now. Very well, in that case, please exercise judgment befitting of a leader. You can lose your life here needlessly. Or will you allow the investigation to continue? Gah! He's using the investigation as an excuse. Why would he go to all that trouble? What is this man thinking? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I trust you have no objections. Well then let us continue the investigation. All oh, the dots. Mr. Edgeworth! Well, what should we do, sir? For now, we have no choice but to accept his proposal. At least we'll be able to investigate. But, listen well, detective. I'll use the investigation to buy his time. Meanwhile, gather up all your men. Surround the president's plane so that he can't escape. Ah, right! Roger that, sir! To be continued, what an explosive first start. Yes. Alright, um, hmm, inside the plane now? The death of the bodyguard, Ethan Rook, and the arrival of Shelley, the killer. A new development in this case has come to light. Under Knightley's direction, the door of the president's plane was opened. And after the paramedics attending Mr. Rook left, we set foot inside the plane one by one. He, I, I, I'm just, I, I just, I, I just can't help the fact that he still got the guy by the throat with the knife. Uh, while having one arm bandaged. I mean, that guy is just... I mean, no one wants to mess with him. I don't blame him. But still, that is one tough dude. March 25th, 4 to 15 p.m. President's Plane Office. Oh my, where would the president be? Who knows? It seems it's just beyond that door. Still a coward, I see. You think he just showed himself in front of a hitman? Ha 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 ha, not a chance. Oh, didn't I tell you already? My purpose here is simply to investigate the case. I thought you said that you want to kill the president. Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, we await your examination of the body. Right. For now, I have no choice but to obey and continue the investigation. The rest is up to Detective Gumshoe. I'm counting on you. The attempted assassination of the president became the murder of a bodyguard. Hee <laughs> It looks like you could use some help, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, I don't deny it, but... See? Exactly. That's the case. It can't be helped. Just leave it to the great chi- Great Thief K. Faraday. Do you have Little Thief? Right. So are you saying you could solve this case? Nope. <laughs> Said with such certainty. Instead, I'll stick to being a support. That's cool. I like you as my support. Right. Let's get straight to the investigation. We need to buy time for the police to prepare. I'll need to draw out the investigation for as long as I can. Alright, let's go. Yeah, what's up? Uh, notice anything? So, there were actually two people who dressed up as the assassin in the Red Hood. No, it's too early to say for sure at the moment. But there's Mr. DeKiller, who is a professional assassin. And then there's Nicole who aimed the laser pointer at the president's forehead. I mean, president, uh, ugh, oh, this is making my head spin. The reason we cannot see the truth is because something else is obstructing it. I get it, if we stole that something, then we'd also be stealing the truth. Hmm, 
Well, I suppose that's one way to look at it. About the investigate. Actually, I've been studying up on investigation techniques. Oh? Well, that sounds promising, but what could you really learn in two weeks? First, examine the evidence and information that you saw. Present the stolen evidence, connect the stolen information, and a new truth will appear for you to steal. Okay, well, that's kind of right. Oh, the dots. <laughs> How was that? I worked really hard at it. Hmm. You get points for effort, I guess. The investigation. I can't believe a real professional assassin asked us to investigate the case from. I couldn't agree more. Just what is he thinking? In any case, let's continue the investigation. Let's do this for Mr. Vork's sake as well. That's a really cool batch. Okay, so that's the same. It doesn't let us skip it. But it's definitely the same. Yeah, that, that's definitely the same. So... Red raincoat. And, uh, that's not going to help. Alright. Let's check out Organizer and go to Profiles. Nicole Swift, um, seeking a scoop? Shelly Day Killer. Uh, professional assassin seems to have a connection to the victim. Horace Knightley, second in command of present bodyguard, seems fond of his gun. Ethan Rook, the victim, leader of the bodyguards, died protecting the president. Wow, 11 year age difference here. Okay. Two gas masks lay on the table, ready to protect against poison gas attacks. The president seems to be quite fearful of assassinations. So, this is a rumor gas mask? My first time seeing the real thing? Rumored. Among the great thieves. No, the German Ninja! <laughs> the children's program. During Princess Viola's wedding ceremony? The poison tongue ninja S Simon Kowal? I should stop listening to her so seriously. It never seems to pay off. Aww. It's an inflatable lifeboat with an oar sitting on top. Looks like it's ready to be used at any time. Hey, uh, there's only one oar. Well, I guess you could try to paddle with your hands. Poor girl. Maybe. I mean, maybe, poor girl, maybe she's actually involved in everything and I'm sympathizing with the murderer. Uh, it's, it's kind of confusing. Maybe she was forced to wear the red raincoat because Shelly the Killer has something on her. I mean, it's not like he hasn't taken uh, hostages in the past, right? Such sad music, too. It ain't me. I'm... Just a journalist. All I wanted was a scoop. I never killed nobody. Well, you still haven't told us why you could steal the parka from us. Well, well that's because I thought y'all would get suspicious. Is that really the only reason? You gotta believe me, Mr. Prosecutor. I didn't do nothing. I won't tell you not to worry. But there's no need to be overly frightened. If you truly are innocent, I swear I'll prove it. Yeah, my mentor does believe in me. For the last time, Miss Swift, I am not your mentor. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Poskitter. I meant to say that you'll always be my second mentor. Well, that's not quite what I meant. <laughs> I guess the prosecutor's stern glare and his unrelenting questioning. I am at loss for words. I haven't even done anything yet. Okay, so probably nothing with these, right? Just as you said, I was the one behind them recordings, but I ain't never. Say no more, Miss Swift. I'm on your side. You're right. 
I'll pop down. I'm just a useless reporter. Poor girl. Okay, I can't help this. I can't help but to say that on that one. Having, having had my struggles with uh, depression and mental illness in the past, I can honestly say I can sympathize with that sadness and hopelessness that she's feeling right now. But don't you worry, Nicole. The sun will come up and it will be a brighter day. Just like you all. The sun will come up. No matter how good your day is going, the sun's going to come up again and you're going to have another good day. But if the sun didn't come up for you today, don't worry, the sun will come up for you tomorrow. Believe it. There's always... There's always something amazing waiting for you right around the corner. You just got to believe that's possible and go forth with boldness and, and make your dreams come true my friend that's not what I meant even if you do not say a word the evidence will speak for you the truth is out there all we have to do is reveal it mr. prosecutor I reckon I'm gonna use that as my next headline um sure Whatever cheers her up. Oh god, they're gonna think I'm Scully. Is this Scully? I never seen the X-Files. Just I know one of them is a believer and one of them isn't. Like one of them says the truth is out there. Is it wait, is it Moeller? Moeller? Mulder? Boulder? Mully? Whatever. Someone like who's seen X-Files correct me in that comment section. Suddenly, the prosecutor points the gun at the reporter. I fear that this unlucky reporter will soon find herself at the bottom of the lake. You shouldn't talk like that. Save it for when you actually get shot. Wow. That was cruel. If I did get shot, I reckon I wouldn't be saying much at all. Hmm, I guess you have a point. Okay, so nothing for these things. And we know the tape recorder is going to be the same as the pictures because we saw the tape recorder show up. So there's no reason to do that twice. Guess I'll be the star of tomorrow's headlines. Don't be so hasty, Miss Swift. The truth has yet to be found. It still hasn't been decided. Journalist is truly deadlier than her pen. Beautiful assassin masquerades as reporter. From living room to diner, I'll be the talk of the town. I think those headlines are a little unlikely. Prosecutor presents a shiny pointy badge and asks, How about a nice cold glass of water? I said no such thing. <laughs> the detective adds, Would you prefer some grape, ju grape juice instead, pal? Aww. She's even got the pal. I would love some grape juice. Seriously. Like right now, I would absolutely love grape juice. I don't have any though. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm just getting ready for the real deal. My interrogation. Prosecutors don't handle the interrogation, so we definitely don't offer people grape juice. Oh, Gumshoe might. Yeah, he probably would. That's right, pal! Gumshoe! You're supposed to be getting, like, people to surround the plane. Ah, oh, that's right, pal. Sorry about that, pal. All right, okay, cool. Examine. The internal and external views of the plane are being monitored by these monitors. Okay, that's like... Can we add an extra monitor in there somewhere? Okay. Instantly, the first thing that jumps out at me is whatever the heck this thing is. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what is this? It's just so bizarre. Oh, and this one's like not working. Well, left is always right. What's this thing? Ooh, let's suppress this precious stuffed animal. I don't really get it, but some kind of keepsake. Don't touch it. How am I supposed to touch it? It's a camera. Precious, well, that's unexpected. Hey, it kind of looks like there's been a break in. Indeed. The area it stands on does look a bit unnatural. Hmm. Are those glass shards underneath the stuffed animal? This unnatural empty space. Perhaps. Was there another monitor here? 
Security monitors. Display surveillance videos of the plane in the surrounding area one mile to its missing. So wait, so this thing is actually there. It was hiding behind a screen. So someone broke this to get to this thing. It also looks like this thing should have an extra, like, horn? I mean, symmetry. I'm, I'm a big fan of symmetry. It looks like there's symmetry missing there. Those monitors show the cockpit and the aircraft's exterior. There doesn't seem to be anything out of place. This monitor shows what's happening in this room. They got some pretty good tech. Is that so? I don't know much about these types of things. It even captures the fine lines around your eyes, Mr. Edgeworth. Oops, my bad. <laughs> Those are the usual wrinkles on your forehead. <laughs> okay, is that all you want to say? These monitors. Okay, so I would think there would be something there. This monitor shows an external view of the airplane. He must have wanted to know exactly when and where his enemies would attack. Well, against an opponent such as myself, this is all meaningless. Eh? You mean you can sneak out to the plane without being seen by the security cameras? Yes, quite easily. How do you do it? Please teach me, master! <laughs> Okay, who are you calling master, and what are you trying to get him to teach you? I'm sorry. It's just, as a great thief, I, I felt like I couldn't let this chance slip by. I'm terribly sorry, but it's against my policy to accept any student. I see. Well, that's too bad. You don't want to be his student. What do you mean that's just too bad? Exactly! This monitor shows an excellent view of the airplane. Indeed, he was a prudent man and quite foolish as well. To think that he would use such toys to challenge the killer. My master, please teach me your strategies for avoiding security cameras. Okay, enough already. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe next time then. There won't be a next time. Exactly, you don't want that dude teaching you anything, Kay. It's the president's precious stuffed animal. It seems to be a memento of some kind. Glass shards have fallen underneath. I think we've looked at everything, have we not? I won't rest until I suspect that every suspicious no gang for any. The ZBI. The Zangfa Bureau of Investigation. That's kind of weird. Would it be like ZFBI? Well, that's heavy looking vest. The president's clothes must be made from some special fabric. Indeed, it's to protect against bullets. It looks like there's a bullet in the coat. Wow, it does even do, th it even does that? Naturally, this is a bulletproof vest after all. Right on top of the desk, a bullet is embedded. Is, was this the president? Ah, so that's what it is. This is the first time I've seen one. You could have said something earlier. That really surprised me. Are these some kind of official document? I know it's a bit rude, but let's take a peek inside. Looks exactly like... It looks exactly like the, um, the previous thing we saw. Hmm... This seems to be a security plan. Ah, this looks like the one we found earlier in the trash can. Yes, it does. But what's this? Something seems out of place. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I meant to do that. It's the positioning. They're in the wrong position. They're in the wrong position.
Yeah, they're in the wrong position. Um, this. What's this? The details of the security plans were changed. Eh? Ah, you're right! Yeah, that's right. It was changed yesterday. Present orders. Why this sudden change? Because two days ago, the killer attacked the prison. Really? And he failed? That's not like you, Shelly. He disguised himself as a bodyguard. Brooke was the first to notice. He had already gotten close to the prison. Brooke managed to stop him just in the nick of time. Brooke grabbed the left arm and twisted it. And then he fired one bullet square into his left arm. What were you doing at that time, Mr. Knightley? I was. If I remember correctly, the first person I took out that day was you. Oops, was that a touchy subject? Eh, shoulda. Don't tell her to shut up. So back then. Your neck injury has yet to heal and you've already forgotten. No, no, not you, not now. Since that day, I haven't been able to turn my head right. It sucks. To think that I would suffer an injury. Ethan Rook. You could say he was the most capable individual, unlike some people I know. Unlike <laughs> this man. <laughs> I mean, normally I like to say I love it when the protagonists are on the same page, but what if the antagonists are on the same page? What does that mean? Sis, what's so different about me and Rook? I believe you're about as different as a pawn and a queen. Ouch! What? So you remembered Rook's name because he was highly capable. Well, that's correct. Well, this guy's as a bodyguard. I happen to hear his name. There was no way I could forget that name. Only a select few have ever been able to injure me. So, this was the connection the killer was talking about. Security arrangements were changed, so that the killer would not be able to sneak in as a bodyguard again. Only the presidents who must trust his subordinates would accompany him on the stage. In short, me and Rook. Alright, uh, shows the bodyguard's position modified yesterday. It appears your positions were also changed. That's true. He's now on the right side. Because I can't turn my head to the right. My position got changed to the prison's left side. In other words, I was relocated to the right side of the stage. Okay. This thing's adorable. A strange decoration based off some strange animal is staring at me with its strange eyes. There's also a leaf on the statue. See? Right here on its butt. Oh, that would be most unforgivable. Eh? Ah! I'm sorry! I didn't mean anything by it! Well, that lever most likely operates the trapdoor underneath my feet. Hmm, then... That hatch is actually a pitfall trap. I hope you understand. It would be in your best interest not to pull that lever. When a killer talks about your best interest, it would be wise to do as he says. It's a collection of colorful personal security alarms. They all seem to have been used before. The president? He sure is a nice guy. He bought these security alarms to protect his wife and kids. Then why would he leave them all here? It's obvious that they're for his own personal use. Objection! <laughs> a single person can't carry that many security alarms. Because uh, a person only has two hands. That objection is worth zero points. <laughs> Alright, I can't do anything else with this. 
I forgot, I can just hold the circle button to fast forward through things I've already seen. That makes double checking easier because like I'm holding circle and nothing's fast forwarding. This is a bulletproof vest. You wear it to protect yourself from bullets. There seems to be a bullet stuck in here. What was that all of a sudden? Eh, I've always wanted to describe things like you do. Okay, I don't talk like that. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Okay. All right, back. I want to go to my organizer and see if I can do anything with the uh, bulletproof vest. I can't. Is it because it's a logic? Let's see. Uh. I'm gonna go with the most obvious thing. Nope. Fizzle. I can't see a clear connection between these two pieces of information. Ow. I need to take this over one more time. Or not. Let's continue the search. Alright, check this area earlier. Well, I want to look at the um the light perver preserver. Oh, it's a little birdie! Do we need to put the birdie on the stand again? Next to the bite shield, there's a canary in a cage. Oh, it's so cute! I want to be my partner! Absolutely, I love birds as partners. Partner? Of course, it can help me open locks and do all the other old jobs at the crime scene. A great thief should always use nature to our advantage. I've heard a canary has been able to detect poison gas. Don't tell me. Yeah, uh, used to take like canaries into mines. And if the canary dies, you know that there's poisonous gas. Okay, so that's a bite shield. We can't look at the bite shield. How about this? Okay, use that. The present is just beyond this door. This door? I'm getting a sense that's challenging me. Okay, there's no need to feel challenged by a door. But look at how big it is! All those electronic locks? It's challenging me to unlock it! <laughs> <laughs> Calm down and think it over. What is the purpose of a key? What is the purpose? Uh, to unlock treasure? That's right, to unlock treasure. All the dots. Was that the right answer? <laughs> I won't rest. Okay, yes. Okay, why is the case empty? The victim is Ethan Rook. He was the president's bodyguard. After hearing the gunshots, he immediately evacuated the president into the plane. He gave up his life to fulfill his duties. Does this mean he'll receive a posthumous promotion? Okay, there's no need for forced comment. How did you know? Bodyguards don't follow that promotion system. Okay. This is a bulletproof attache case. It's a tool bodyguards use to protect themselves from bullets. It can be seen in case photo. It seems Rook and Knifley both had one. Okay, they both had one. You, got, you still got shot dead though. Ah, that's the scene I stole on film. You didn't do anything illegal in taking this. Anyway, anytime. I'm always in the mood to steal. <laughs> you just wanted to use the word steal, didn't you? <laughs> Have I been caught? The bullet pierced his body just below the armpit. The bullet went straight through the victim's body. Where did it go? Okay. Oh, so he was... Huh? Unfortunately, it was hit in the areas. Bulletproof vest didn't cover. It really seems like a well-aimed shot. The cause of death was most likely blood loss. The bleeding has stopped. Cause of death. Blood loss from bullet wound in the chest. Bullet passed through his body. The paramedics were called to treat Mr. Look, right? I'm afraid they didn't make it in time. It seems the victim also carried a gun. Did he try to shoot something? He may have drawn it out of instinctively to return fire. We need to check to see if the gun has fired any bullets. 
Hmm, it's still fully loaded. There's no evidence of any shots being fired. The gun is also from Zhang Fa, right? Oh, uh, yeah. We will always issue the same model revolver. Interesting. Okay, so nothing with the, uh, the radio. The lever on that strange statue operates this trap door. If we pull that lever, they will both fall down. Mr. Roar and Mr. Dick Killer. Indeed, and that would be most unforgivable. I was thinking about pulling the lever. I sound like I want to be the hero who got the killer. Okay, your inner voice is leaking out. <laughs> All right, so let's back out. Let's use the bullet that pierced through with the bulletproof vest. Two bullets were fired. We know that from the number of gunshots. One hit the sealed samurai balloon and the other took Rook's life. But didn't that bullet also hit the president's bulletproof vest? Right. It doesn't match up with the number of shots. Yeah, that's what I was confused about too. If he was wearing the vest, he would have survived. However, there's one way to solve this. One way? The bullet that stole Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. In other words, Rook and the present were hit by the same bullet. I see. Well, that's right. It'd be dangerous if you hadn't won that bulletproof vest. Is the president all right? Even while wearing a bulletproof vest, you can still get injured. Yeah, the bullets in back can still fracture your bones. But don't worry, he's fine. The president's trained himself like no other. Maybe the president didn't need a, even need a bulletproof vest. I think that might be pushing it. I'd like to examine the bullet. There's a chance there may have ballistic markings. Ballistic markings? Uh, what's that? Ballistic markings are always left on a bullet. Each gun leaves a different marking, sort of like a fingerprint. So if we examine the ballistic markings, we'll know which gun the bullet was fired from. You could say they'll like the gun's fingerprints. Hey! That's what I just said. I'm, I mean, that's what every cop drama show says, right? I get it now. Let's investigate right away. I think that'd be difficult. The bullet was completely flattened when it hit the bulletproof vest. There's no way you could investigate the ballistic markings. What? But I want to investigate them. Bulletproof vest data updated in my organizer. Okay, we still have other logic clues and we still have to, uh, like, talk to this whatever's going on in this scene. But we're going to do that next time, my dear friends. I love you all so very much. Thank you for everything. I so appreciate all your support. Um, and you guys are just the number one YouTube community in all of YouTube. I, I, I am, I'm just left speechless all the time. Whenever I wake up in the morning and I know I have a long day ahead of me and at lunchtime I'll see, oh, I got a comment on Ace Attorney or whatever we're playing. And to know that someone took the time to do that, it, it just, it, it means a lot more than you know so thank you for everything i hope you guys have a wonderful fantastic excellent day and until next time so long and take care thank you for watching this video feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next i always love to hear your thoughts but before we go please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself never let the world tell you any different much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.